Normally I start these videos with a little bit of a quip or something to ease us into the video, but I really wanted to bring up something I genuinely thought was odd while watching a playthrough of Poppy Playtime Chapter 3. Oh, while I would tell you that it was released a few days ago and that you should check it out, you probably already have, I doubt you'd be here if you haven't seen something about it. This video will contain spoilers for the game, so watch at your own discretion. Anyway, during the final boss fight, when Catnap shows up, he immediately sprays us with the red smoke. But we don't go to sleep, we still run around and complete puzzles, so it's assumed that we're just hallucinating, right? I'm not convinced that's the case. I'm sure someone else will notice and speculate on the specifics, but up until this point, we hadn't seen any hallucinations when exposed to the gas. We'd only ever fallen unconscious. So for this to happen without any warning is odd, to say the least. By extension, I think that we're dreaming when the catnap boss fight happens. Throughout the entire thing, we're breathing in that gas, and it isn't until we go back down the elevator, back to the same place where the gas started, that the red tint completely dissipates. If we fell asleep there, it would make sense that's where we'd be when we woke up. And if that's true, then that implies that catnap isn't dead and the prototype never showed up. And also, what an odd sequence when the prototype reaches down. I guess it tracks for Catnap's characters to submit himself before it's god. I just thought that the whole thing was a little on the nose, almost like it was dreamt up. Oh. I mean, the player saw Catnap doing the same to an effigy earlier in the game, with the mention of Catnap seeing Prototype as his god being mentioned several times, so to have such a direct allusion to it also tracks. And also, also, the green text that shows up on the monitor before you start the boss fight leans a bit towards my theory too. I mean, why so vague and weird? It's like it isn't even a program, but a person on the other side. There are definitely other explanations that can be thought up, like maybe it's Ollie on the other side of the monitor, or the fact that when you lose your hand after electrocuting catnap, it doesn't come back when you go back down to the gas production zone. All that jazz. Either way, I think that's a good end for catnap. And I would be surprised if he were to come back later. I just thought it was worth a bit of pondering. Welcome to Mindfork. Since I made that start sequence so long, we'll just get straight into it. I should note though that my explanation on what the gas is shouldn't take those earlier thoughts into consideration since they're purely speculative. I could be super off base which would affect my answer here. It's pretty firmly established that the red smoke in Poppy Playtime is from a poppy flower, specifically the opium poppy, and that's fine and dandy, but why? Just to get a little more specific, the thing that gives the poppy its kick are the alkaloids in it, which are basically compounds found in plants that have nitrogen atoms. We'll get more into this later. Anyway, something that got me curious while watching a few playthroughs were some other effects we ran into, notably the hallucinations and nightmares. Considering what we know about opium, this doesn't line up perfectly, and so I tried to find really anything about the gas, other than speculative theories and vague descriptions. But I didn't come up with a lot, so I'm going to come up with my own ideas. To that end, we know that the red smoke isn't just the poppy, since it's described as being various undisclosed ingredients. And that's fine, sure, but what ingredients? Well, if we can figure out what exactly the gas does to people, we can pick out the most likely ingredient to do that, and make a bit of an educated guess on what the gas is. Let's start with the easiest ingredient to find, opium. Like I said before though, the thing that gives opium its most interesting properties are the alkaloids in it. That's morphine and codeine, mostly. The most abundant being morphine at about 12%. I'm going to run with morphine for the purposes of this answer though, since it's easier for me to use in this context. As for the others, luckily enough, throughout the chapter we're directly exposed to the red smoke. Quite a lot. And so seeing what it does to the player is the best opportunity we've got at figuring what else it does to people. First off, it sedates us, makes us sleep, like morphine does. However, when we first enter the home sweet home and walk into the thick cloud of red smoke, we can infer that it takes seconds, if that, for us to form conscious. Opium can make us fall asleep, sure, but not that fast. To do that, you would need to up the dosage massively. But if the dose were so high that it knocked you out in less than a few seconds, then it'd also be high enough for you to stop breathing, since opium can suppress and even stop your respiratory system. So we can guess that another sleeping agent with a far higher potency is present. As for the hallucinations, the most notable is right at the end, when we confront Catnap and he floods the room with gas again. 
but this time we don't fall asleep, instead he takes on a far more disturbing version of himself and chases us around on the floor above while we keep him at bay. This time we're a little out of luck when it comes to opium since the alkaloids, morphine and codeine, aren't known for causing hallucinations, so again it's probably another ingredient, or perhaps something else is happening here. And of course, we see some other effects it has, like the euphoric response from the other smiling critters in that one episode, or the non-lethal but highly potent description the wiki has, but I'm not sold on those. That last one, I wasn't able to find any documentation that explicitly says that it's non-lethal. Whether or not I missed a document where it said that, or it's a piece of dialogue I skipped past, who knows. I just wanted to get that out there. That means I'm going to lean pretty softly on those two, since the first is a cartoon, not the most credible source, and the second, because like I said, I haven't found any evidence of its non-lethality. Though there's always the assumption that it'll be lethal in high concentrations, as any gas is lethal in high concentrations. This is because it takes up space in your lungs, that place where air is supposed to go, but potato potato. Anyway. Since the red smoke is made from opium, we know that it can make you relax and go to sleep, but like we discovered, there's a problem here, right? Opium and morphine induce a sense of relaxation and euphoria rather than causing nightmares. Now, I really do want to say that the poppy gas acts in a similar way to Scarecrow's fear toxin, I love that stuff, in the way that it creates messed up hallucinations and nightmares that purposefully make you feel afraid, but I'm pretty sure that's not the case. Looking at our player character and what we know about the human brain, it's possible that the stressful environment we're in is directly contributing to the hallucinations we see. So to summarize, the poppy flower, morphine, can make you drowsy and full of sleep, but it doesn't make up the majority of the gas. If it did, it would kill you. It doesn't cause nightmares, and it doesn't cause hallucinations. So we need to find ingredients that do those things. Let's get the biggest issue out of the way first. Breathability. If the gas you're inhaling has too low a concentration of oxygen, you'll die, no matter how safe the gas is. Not to mention that the gas's primary use is for children, so it really needs to be dialed down. I suppose safety isn't the first thing these scientists have in mind, but having a good subject for experimentation is more beneficial than not. Anyway, if you've ever had laughing gas, you'll know firsthand what I'm talking about. Nitrous oxide by itself isn't the most dangerous gas you can inhale, I mean back in the 1800s it was used recreationally by the British upper class in something called laughing gas parties. You should search it up, it's pretty funny. But it's not quite what we're looking for here. Current medical uses for nitrous oxide typically have it mixed at 30% nitrous oxide and 70% oxygen. And that may seem like a lot, but the average percentage of oxygen in the atmosphere is 21%. So when the rest of it is replaced with something we can't absorb as fast, we need a good amount of oxygen to keep us safe. We can't know for certain how much oxygen is necessary, but I think I'm going to keep the chemical ratios to a minimum for obvious reasons. Next are the nightmares. Now I doubt that the gas was purposefully designed to give you nightmares, but it's a side effect nonetheless. And it also ties it to a different problem that the opium gas has. It's not strong enough. I briefly went over it before, but morphine doesn't knock you out that fast, so we either need something to make the potency stronger, or a secondary agent that strengthens it. One that does this is sevaflurane. By itself, sevaflurane is an anesthesia medication that knocks you out pretty fast. Sevaflurane is really good here for a few bonus points. The first is that it's described as having quite a pleasant smell and taste which makes it easier for patients to tolerate, especially children. It also works very quickly, and leaves the body very quickly once you've stopped breathing it in. The last is that because of those reasons, sevaflurane is used in pediatric surgeries for children. There's a couple problems though. The first is, like morphine, it suppresses the respiratory system, making breathing far more difficult. But again, we can recover it somewhat by increasing the amount of oxygen present in the gas. However, it also doesn't cause nightmares. Morphine and sevaflurane are sedatives. They relax you, so what kind of sedative would it be if it gave you nightmares? I'm going to zero in on one particular case where it does, since it's the most extreme example, with a little bit of explanation to help us along the way. Introducing Marie Payne. Within the first few minutes of Chapter 3, we encounter a VHS tape. Paired with an incident report in the Chapter 3 interactable ARG, then you'll find that on February 8th, Marie suffered from a pretty intense nightmare that she wouldn't wake from. Marie is described as screaming violently just after the lights went out when Catnap had flooded the room with red smoke. 
She was experiencing an intense nightmare she wouldn't wake from. Her eyes darted around the room, her skin was pale like a ghost, her lips were blue, her heart was racing, and her skin was hot to the touch. She's also described as seeing a colourless monster, and flailing her arms and legs about. So why is this only happening to Marie? I think that Marie has a genetic condition called malignant hypothermia. To summarise, it's when exposure to specific medications cause an extremely severe reaction, including a rapid heart rate, dangerously high body temperature and muscle spasms, along with others but not so relevant here. And do you want to know which medications are known to be direct triggers for malignant hypothermia? Sevilafine. Paired with the clear distress that Marie is going through, I wouldn't be surprised if you started seeing things. It would also explain why it's only her that it's affected this way. Malignant hypothermia is a genetic disorder, unique to Marie in this instance. But what about the nightmares, I hear you asking? Well, severlophone is still an anaesthetic, which means that all this is happening while she's unconscious. Especially if you're still dosed with the stuff, you're not going to wake from something like that instantly. To someone unaware, it might even look like a case of extreme night terrors. And that's it. For the ingredients anyway, there's a couple of things I haven't touched on yet, but we'll get there. So if the red smoke were a mixture containing severlophone, oxygen and morphine, then we could hypothetically expect the following. Inhaling the red smoke would kick the sevilophane into gear, causing you to fall unconscious very quickly, within seconds. The oxygen in the mixture would ensure that the individual continues to receive sufficient oxygen to maintain vital functions. Sevilophane and morphine both lower blood pressure and heart rate, so we can expect that here too. And the two can also affect the nervous system, which could cause sedation, confusion and altered consciousness if they manage to stay awake. We'll get more into that shortly. I should also mention that morphine is an addictive substance, so it would affect him on that level too. But I hear you saying, what about the final boss fight? What about the hallucinations? None of those ingredients cause hallucinations, so what's going on here? Is there another ingredient that you're not telling us about? Well, I appreciate how talkative you're being, but no, there's nothing else. As far as I know anyway, to answer that question, we need to take a closer look. There are only three times in the game that we're dosed with the gas. The first is on entering home sweet home before we get the gas mask. The second is in the counselor's office after it's taken from us. And the third is the boss fight at the end. But there's a difference. The gas production zone is much larger. Why does this matter? Well, in home sweet home, the gas is restricted to those rooms, very small, finite areas. The counselor's office is also a very small, finite area. The gas production zone, on the other hand, is massive. And since the hallucinations follow us all the way upstairs, it's spread to the second story too. This probably means that the concentration of red smoke is significantly lower than the standard concentration. Based on what we know, this could potentially result in a much lighter level of sedation, rather than the deep sleep like we see previously. In this case, it's possible that the player is in a state where they are partially conscious and aware of their surroundings. This partial consciousness can blur the line between what's real and what isn't. These kinds of psychological responses could also be influenced by the circumstances they find themselves in, such as being chased by a giant purple cat. Now, does everything line up? I guess? If you were super paying attention though, you might have noticed that despite talking about Marie's nightmare, I didn't really touch on the ones from the kids outside playtime that bought the catnap plushie. And while I don't have the best explanation for this one, that's why it's at the end after all, my assumption is that the toy was built for a specific kind of gas, and thus a specific concentration. If it were just swapped out, the gas could have come out at a much stronger concentration and affected those kids in a more aggressive way. But anyway. I'm pretty happy with this outcome, but I'd like to be proven wrong. Although as it's fine with me, it's a little boring for a video game that has a human experimentation in it. Sevilophane, oxygen and morphine. Although I should add that it's profoundly illegal to combine these together and use it on someone, so don't do that. I doubt we'll ever get an answer straight from the devs about what the stuff actually is, but if it turns out there's some crazy stuff in there, I would be very happy to see it. Anyway, that's all from me. If you like the video, subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for being here.